To determine the K of this bottom reaction here, we're going to use these two reactions to build that bottom reaction and use the Ks to construct the K of the new reaction. The first thing we want to lay in place is the SO2. We need SO2 on the left-hand side of the reaction. If we look at equation number one here, we see that SO2 is on the right-hand side, so we need to reverse that reaction. When I reverse the reaction, I have SO2 gas plus one-half O2 gas giving me SO3 gas. Now, when you reverse the reaction, you don't change the sign of Kp, you take the reciprocal. So the K of this reaction, and we'll call it K1, is going to be, we'll call it Kp1 prime, okay? It's a new K. It's going to be 1 over 0.45. You take the reciprocal when you reverse the reaction. That is equal to 2.222 on repeating forever. Okay, now the next reaction, or the next component I need is NO2 in place. In reaction number two, NO2 is a product, so we're going to have to reverse this reaction. When I reverse the reaction, I get NO2 gas producing NO gas plus one half O2 gas. Now the Kp for this reaction, which I'll give it a prime, is going to again be one over that value, which is four. It's the reciprocal when you reverse the reaction. It is so hard for students to remember this because you've been having drilled into you about delta H and delta G, certain procedures to follow. The procedures here are completely different. Now, does that get us the SO3 and the NO in place? Well, there's the SO3, there's the NO that we need. Let's cancel what cancels. Let's bring down what remains, that is SO2 gas plus NO2 gas, yielding SO3 gas plus NO gas. These do add up to give me what we're looking for. So now we have to bring those Ks together to give the K for this new reaction. The K, when you add reactions, you do not add Ks. You always multiply them. So for the, the K for this reaction is going to be 2.22 times 4, or 8.88 repeating, which is 8.9, and that's how we get the answer.